We are gathered here to honor Captain Jim Hadley, a man we all admire and love. It's a pity we must age and let others take our place, but that's the way it is. Like many of you, I've known Jim ever since he joined the department. And as chief of your fire department, I want to take this opportunity personally to thank him for his 40 years of loyal devotion to duty. Now, had our honored guest played politics, he might have worked his way up to commissioner, or mayor, or even fire chief. <laughs> <laughs> However, Captain Jim Hadley chose the hard way. He worked untiringly, and those of you in the department will never forget him for his cooperation, his friendship, and his fearlessness. And now that he's been pensioned, he can look forward to a well-earned life of ease. And I know that I speak for all of us when I wish Jim the best of everything. On behalf of the boys of your company, I have the pleasure of presenting you with this token. Good luck, Captain Hadley, and may all your troubles be false alarms. <laughs> you have no idea, Frank, how glad I am that Dad has been retired. <laughs> I suppose you want to say a few words? Uh, <laughs> I appreciate this. I'm sorry it's because I'm leaving the department. It's been my very life. I've enjoyed every minute of it. But they say that when a man becomes my age, he's outlived his usefulness. <laughs> but I'm a lucky man. I've made many good friends and most of you are here. It's my fervent prayer that I may Keep those friendships, even though I'm going to become a gentleman of leisure. I, uh, <laughs> I'm really uh, a good after dinner speaker, but I I'm, <laughs> I'm handicapped this time because I haven't had my dinner yet. <laughs> <laughs> Stop that noise! Oh, stop ringing that bell! Why, my husband's a slid! Where is it? Where is it? Any scissors or knife you want sharpened, lady? No, we don't want any. All right. Oh, where back is? to bed, darling. It was just a man wanting to sharpen scissors. Oh, I forgot I was a gentleman of leisure. Ah, <laughs> uh, you'll get used to it. Just think. You haven't a thing in the world to do but take it easy. <laughs> yeah. I've been titled to arrest, huh? Oh, you certainly have, darling. Oh, and you can start right now by taking that trunk up to the attic. Great start. brass on the hook and ladder about now. Did you read the morning paper? Yeah. Why don't you turn on the radio? No programs I want to listen to. Can I help? Oh, sure. <laughs> What's funny? I'm <laughs> just thinking about the gang. All the things they've got to do, and here I am taking it easy. Oh. Now take it easy in the other room, will you, darling? Yeah. Oh, Ma, what about playing a little casino with me? What did you say? What about playing a little casino with me? Oh, don't be silly, Jim. You know I'm busy.
pardon me. <laughs> if you don't know what to do with yourself, take those jars down to the basement. Okay. I wouldn't take too many if I were you. Ah, not do it. Ma. Good morning, madam. I mean, sir. I represent the magnificent Bush Company. We carry a full line of Bush. How do you do? Come right in. I'm glad to see you. Make every, yourself at home, huh? Every good home should have a reliable Bush in them. We have right. the most reliable Bushes, and once you apply them, you will be a steady customer. <laughs> Uh, sit right down there and have a chair and you have your hat and these things too, huh? Oh, well. I thought you might like to buy a bush. You sure I'm not intruding? Oh, no, 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 no. You see, uh, I was kind of lonesome and the wife threw me out of the kitchen again. Again? Yeah, she's been doing it all day. Ever since I got up this morning and put out a fire, but there wasn't any fire, so I stayed home. <laughs> I think I'd better be going. Oh, what's your hurry? What's your hurry? You just came. You see, uh, I'm on a pension. The boy threw a big party last night, and the chief spoke. <laughs> and my, my best friend tore up my speech. <laughs> I wish you could have been there. <laughs> Thanks, just the same. But I had a date. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> you sell those things? Uh, yeah. Here we have number two, a housewife's delight. You know, it, it must be awfully interesting. You meet all kinds of people, all sorts, I guess, huh? Yeah, uh, all sorts. Well, hello, Ma. We don't want any. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Jim, why, well, you should know better than let one of those salesmen into the house. They'll talk an arm off you. Oh, but he's different. He hardly said a word. You were busy and I had nothing to do and it was nice to have someone to talk to. Why don't you take a walk? It's a lovely day. Go on. The exercise will do you good. That's an idea. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Well, 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 look who's coming our way. If it isn't the boy orator. <laughs> I'm a customer as I am to public speaking. I... <laughs> Hi, slaves. How does it feel to be a gentleman of leisure, Jim? Nothing like it. It's great. In about six months, you'll know. Do you think the chief will give me a send-off? If he does, I'll tear up your speech and cram it down your throat. <laughs> Make him eat his own words, huh, Jim? <laughs> Say, how about a game of pinochle before Briggs here gets too funny? Oh, I don't know. I don't have much time. Well, well all, all right. Well, all sure, right. come on. We'll all have a good time. <laughs> Hi, right, fellas. Hi, Jeff. Couldn't stay away, eh? Oh, yeah, I'll beat the pants off of it. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I'll deal. All right, but from the top. Yeah. You're not superstitious about my sitting in front of you, are you? No, no, Jim, of course not. <laughs> no, of course not.
150 trumps, 100 aces, 60 queens, my luck and alarm has to come in. Claiming that apartment house fire. $80,000, huh? I adore you, honey. That's quite a loss. Yes, it is. I think you're gorgeous. Mr. Stevens wants you to investigate it right away. Well, guess our little love scene's over. See you later. And don't be late. I won't. you two fellows on the job because I wanted some action. And all I get is more fires. Look, Lieutenant, we're doing all we can. The chemical analysis of the ruins shows that each fire was started with gasoline. I know that. And we have every reason to believe that time bombs are used. Stop it, stop it, will you, Roberts? The next thing I know, you guys will be giving me weather reports. I want that fire bug and I want him right away. <laughs> Lieutenant King speaking. Oh, yes. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, we're doing all we can. We are working on several clues. The chemical analysis of the ruins showed that all fires were started with gasoline. And we have every reason to believe that time bombs were used. I'm not alibying. I'm doing everything I can to catch the firebug. I've just had the boys on the carpet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Goodbye. There's always two sides to every carpet, eh, Lieutenant? Oh, I know you fellows aren't loafing on the job, but, well, this thing's got me all upset. Come on, Roberts, before he has a nervous breakdown. This is getting serious. I have Henderson and Roberts of the arson squad coming in to see you. I'll see them as soon as they get here. All right. Hi, Joan. Hello, Jack. Miss me? I don't remember. I used to be your steady, but I guess I wasn't steady enough. Isn't that right, Frank? Fortunately, for me. Mr. Stevens in? Yes. Good. 
How are you, Henderson? Oh, pretty good. Your company got nicked for the hotel, didn't they? Yes, and for the warehouse, too. We suspected arson, and then we worked on the revenge motive until all the rest of these fires broke out. Then we realized we were on the wrong track. I still believe they're a professional fire bunch, doing it for the insurance. Funny they all got the same idea at the same time. Well, you guys can kid yourselves if you want to, but all of those fires have been started by someone who does it for the thrill of it. A pyromaniac. Yep. And the cat's one of those crazy guys is just a question of luck. The police nabbed one up north last week. Well, he hung around till the fires were put out. Didn't want to miss any of the excitement. Some don't do that. I can't understand how any person can willfully cause so much property damage, endanger the lives of men, women, and even children, just for their own satisfaction. Well, they do. The kink in their mind seems to make them clever. Ah, they're strange people. All the ones I've come in contact with were mild-mannered. Wouldn't hurt a fly. But as soon as they see flames, they go crazy. Got any ideas? No, Mr. Stevens. I'll have to check with the police again. Well, I'd do something if I were you. Now, wait a minute, Stevens. It's no use taking it out on Frank. I've got a job to protect. And it isn't my business to investigate fires. That's Frank's job. All right, do what you wanted to do and hurry. Yes, Mr. Stevens. Sorry, I can't take you to lunch. Got some business to take care of. Well, I'll walk as far as the restaurant with you. So I'll. Be all right. I hope you're right, honey. Oh. See that salt and pepper set? Uh-huh. I've admired that for a long time, and when I'm married, that's exactly the kind of silverware I'm going to have in my home. Whose home? Ours, dear. <laughs> well, they are nice. Say, there's an interesting piece of work. That statue of Vulcan. Vulcan? Yeah. Ever study Roman mythology? Yes, but I can't place that uh, little man. Well, my dear, he just happens to be the god of fire. I still like my salt and pepper set. <laughs> Come on. to fix your shoulder for a long time. I, I'll do it now. I guess you're to blame, eh, Vulcan? argument with Frank? Oh, no, Mother. I'm terribly worried. Mr. Stevens is so unfair. You'd think Frank were neglecting his job. Now, arson isn't easy to pin on anyone, especially when you have a pyromaniac to deal with. Well, maybe you could help, Dad. You've had so much experience. Remember me? I retired. The arson squad's on the job, and the police on the lookout, and Frank has got to go... Well, then you haven't any suggestions? No, my dear. Don't forget I'm not in the service anymore. I have outlived my usefulness. You reached the age limit, Dad. Age limit. What a laugh. One day I'm valuable to the department, next time I'm an old man. Why, I'm just as active as I was 10 years ago. And I've worked side by side with men that are 20 years younger. And I've always done my part. Now, I've reached the age limit. And they've retired me. They want me to sit around twiddle my thumbs. They've got youth in the department. Let them worry about the fires, firebugs. I don't care if the whole city burns down.
anything interesting? No. This is where the fire started, though. Hey, what is it? Wait a minute. That looks like part of a time clock. high into the heavens. They think you're the god of fire. But no, I am. See, it's great, Bert, you know. Taking it easy like this. Of course, I miss you and the boys, but I can always drop in to see you. Oh, yeah, just to make us envious, eh? Oh, <laughs> you know me better than that. Yeah, you're just the type to rub it in. <laughs> Maybe I am putting on a little bit, but won't be long before you're doing the same thing, you know. Oh. Going someplace, huh? Yeah. With you. Uh -huh. so, you know the very first thing we're going to do when I get my pension? Yeah. Going on a fine fishing trip. And boy, there's the spot. Gee, that's all right, huh? Say, and just as soon as the hunting season is open, why, we'll just give this joint the once over. Maybe I can get to use the gun you gave me eight years ago for a birthday present. Sure. Right? <laughs> I've got some other ideas. I'll be right back. Here we go again. Who is 
Bruiser. Bert Stanton. Boom. 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 Badly injured. Where did they take him? The receiving hospital. Huh. Pretty tough on Jim. How is he? He's a very sick man, hurt internally. Well, there must be something to be done. Can I see him? Oh, it's, it's all right, Jim. Oh, you'll be out of here in no time. You'll get a leave of absence, and we go hunting and fishing together. And look, I, I, I found a swell mountain crib. Look, look, Bert, look. There it is, I see. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I like that, Jim. I, I look forward to the pension. It, Oh, we, we, we'll have a grand time together, you and me. Just a couple of gentlemen of leisure, that's us, huh? Yes. Yes, of course. Now, look, all you gotta do is take care of yourself and... You know, yeah. Doing this. I'd like to see the salt and pepper set in the window. Of course. Are these the ones you mean? Yes. They're lovely. How much are they? They're just $10. There's a dent in this one. Really? Oh, I'd be most happy to fix it for you. Well, I'll take them. You don't mind delivering them? Not at all. My name is Miss Hadley. Miss Hadley? 1488. 1488. Comstock. Comstock. Thank you very much, Miss Hadley. Yes. X-ray, X-ray, all about the big fire. X-ray, X-ray, fireman's kill. Boy! Paper lady. Thank you. X-ray, X-ray, all about the big fire. X-ray, X-ray, fireman's kill. X-ray, X-ray, all about the big fire. X-ray, X-ray, fire Feel better? Guess we'd better run along. Got to go back on duty. If there's anything we can do... Uh... Oh, no, but thank you for dropping in. Uh, we'll let ourselves out. Goodbye, Jim. Uh... Suppose Frank and mine have I worked with him? Of course not, Dad. Might be able to help Henderson, too, huh? Oh, I'm sure you could. I'll see who it is. Hello, Dad. Hello, Frank. How's your father taking it? Well, he's pretty upset. Good evening, Frank. I'm sorry, Mr. Hadley. That's all right. Frank, I don't know whether you know it or not, but I've had a little experience on the arson squad. Joan and I were thinking I might be of some help. Fine. I was going to ask you to give us a hand, but 
Well, I knew you were retired and... Oh, well, this is one job I want to do. Good. John, see who's there. Yes, Mother. Good evening, Miss Hadley. I brought the things you wished. Well, thank you. I'll get the money for you. I bought that salt and pepper set this afternoon. I hope I'm not intruding. Oh, well, we've had a terrible shock. A very dear friend of ours died this afternoon. May I offer my condolence? Was your friend ill long? He was injured in a fire today. A very unfortunate. Oh, I'll get it. I'm expecting a call. Hello. Yes, yes, Jack. Well, they made the time clock, didn't they? I see. Well, it was a clue anyway. Sorry it didn't work out. Well, we'll get together in the morning. We're going to have some expert advice, too. Jim Hadley. So long. I'll be seeing you. What happened, Frank? Well, it looked like we were getting someplace, but this, this pyromaniac is a little too clever for us. You said something about a time clock? We found one at the oil fire, traced it to the manufacturer, but it was among those stolen from a warehouse. So we're no better off than we were before. Thanks. I wonder if you could let me have ten dollars, Frank? Sure. I appreciate your bringing up the set. Thank you. Good evening. How about getting together the first thing in the morning? Sooner the better. Good night. Good night, dear. Good night. Where'd King go? I don't know. But the way things are, I wouldn't be surprised if he's taking out more insurance on this building. We gotta do something. Maybe one of us should arrest the other as a suspect. Hello, Captain. Hello, oh, Anderson. Hi, boy. Jack tells me you're going to give us a hand. What makes it so difficult to catch the man we want is that apparently he has no motives, and you can't tell where he's going to pop up next. Where was this piece of time clock found? At the oil tanks. Oil tank, huh? Yeah. I'd like to take a look around. Okay. I picked it up right about here. Must have set off a charge of dynamite. Trace of oraline here. Oraline? Yeah, a rare fluid used to spread flames after an explosion. Let's have the wood analyzed. That's good. Lampard's had enough time to build a house with that piece of wood. We used the spectroscope, a very effective instrument for this type of work. Yes, I know. There was one man whose shop burn put in a claim for silver foxes. But by using this instrument, we discovered he had substituted rabbit skins for the foxes just before the fire. Well? It's oraline, all right, Lieutenant. And the wood is a fine grade of maple. Then get a list of all places selling oraline right away. Yes, sir. Trace down that wood. Now we're getting somewhere, huh? You don't remember anybody who bought a small quantity of white maple? Are you sure you have no record of it? It's very important. Can't you remember? Think. Think hard. When was he here last? What does he look like? Where does he live? He remembered making about 20 little boxes for this man and described him as of medium build and about 40. But couldn't give me any idea as to who he was or where he lived. What did he do? Pick up the boxes at the lumber company? And if he's as smart as I think he is, he won't go back there again. So they thought they could trace that clock, eh? <laughs> Now, Vulcan, you shall see for yourself how I destroy.
got you doing it now, huh, Mother? Well, your father should have been home hours ago. Don't worry. You know Dad when he gets his mind set on something. Oh, I know it is, but... Jim! Sorry I'm late. Why didn't you telephone me so I'd know you were all right? I was busy. Is there anything neat in the house? I'll fix something for you. Coffee and sandwich will do. Jim, darling, I know how important this job is to you, but you've just got to take care of yourself. I'm all right, Ma. Hmm. We were going hunting. Fish. I wish I could lay my hands on the miserable... Yes, I'll tell him. Hold the line, please. Your sandwich is ready, Dad. Okay. Jim, it's for you. Oh. Hello? Hello, Captain? Yes. Yes, Jack. I'm leaving right away. What is it? Big warehouse fire. Oh, but you haven't eaten anything. I'm not hungry, dear. Oh, dear. I'd lost you. Well, Captain, it looks like another one of those things. Looks like a beautiful fire. They say the world will be destroyed by fire. And they're right. I'll destroy it. Good evening, Mr. Hadley. Hello. Evidently, your company didn't insure the warehouse. Fortunately not. I'll fix you something to eat, dear. Don't bother. I grabbed a bite on the way home. Where's your mother? I made her go to bed. Good girl. <laughs> no luck, eh? A pyromaniac is the hardest criminal in the world to catch. And this one left no clues whatever. I hope to catch him at the fire. I must have looked at a thousand faces for the giveaway sign, you know. The wild, scary expression of the firebug. Oh. Like the antique man that was here. What'd you say? 
Well, you remember the man from the antique store? Yes, the fellow who brought the salt and pepper shakers. Yeah. Well, when I let a match for Frank, he stared at us in the strangest way. Like he was fascinated? Yes, Dad. At the time, I thought it was peculiar, but, oh, well, I had other things on my mind. I don't suppose he has anything to do with the fires. Say, he did seem interested in what was going on. You remember, he asked questions. You know anything about him? Not much. He runs a shop near the office. Has all sorts of old things there. Statues of mythological characters. He has one of Mars, another of Vulcan. Vulcan? Yes, the god of fire. Hmm, god of fire. A symbol a pyromaniac might use. Uh, what does this Vulcan look like? Oh, he's a statue. Stands on a pedestal. About that high. Mm -hmm. uh, holds a hammer in one hand. Face looks up. I found one like that at the fire and put it in my car. And when I got home, it was gone. Now, that may have had no connection with the pyromaniac. Nevertheless, I think we ought to look at the one that the antique man has. Sure. It's kind of late, Dad. Never mind, you're pretty head about that. We'll be right back. We'll go in my car. All right. Good night, Doc. Exactly like it. That's the only reproduction of Vulcan I've seen since I left school. Huh. Mind waiting for me at the car? Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening. You've got some very interesting things in the shop here. I kill. I'd like to see that statue in the window. Statue? Yeah, the one of Vulcan. Oh, I'm very sorry, but that is not for sale. It's the property of a client of mine. He left it with me before he went abroad. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. I'm making a collection of statues, and uh, I'd like to add that one to it. How about making me a copy? I'm afraid that will not be possible. You see, my client would not permit that. Oh, well, I guess we can't do any business. Uh, not for the present. I'm afraid not. Thanks for dropping in, Mr. Hadley. Mm. Good night, sir. Good night. Any luck? Didn't strike me quite right. However, he gave me a pretty good reason for not selling it to me. How about driving me to a phone, son? Suits me. I hope you make a habit of calling me, son. <laughs> John. John, I wonder if Mr. Jameson is at home. Well, I could find out why, Mother. Well, I'm a little nervous, and I thought maybe he wouldn't mind dropping over. Well, I'll call him. Dead. I guess the wind must have blown the wires down. Why, John? Oh, now, Mother. Oh. Here, let me get you another cup of coffee. Sorry if I startled you. It's too bad Mr. Hadley had to leave so suddenly. 
Oh, but he'll be right back. Oh, any minute now. I, I don't like to contradict you ladies, but I hardly think so. Please. Hi, Captain. I thought our fireboat might have come back here. We got a report just a moment ago that he was seen in the Mayfair district, but the lieutenant told me to stick around here. Mayfair district? It's pretty close to home. We better get back there, Mr. Hadley. Right. Joan and the wife are there. shakers I bought from you are most satisfactory. Oh, thank you. Do you have candlesticks to match? Candlesticks? No, I'm afraid not, Miss Hadley. It's unfortunate that your father became so interested in my affairs. Unfortunate for you. Unfortunate for your mother. Oh, I don't understand. You will presently. <laughs> I have a little surprise for you. Step on him, Frank. All right. Hurry, hurry. <laughs> it's very nice of you to drop in. I hope you won't think I'm rude, but my mother and I would really like to be alone. Oh, you shall be. <laughs> I shouldn't try to escape if I were you. What does he mean? It's really too bad Mr. Hadley became curious. That she didn't have enough intelligence to mind his own business. gathered to honor Jim Hadley, whose activities in the last week are well known to all of you. Although he is pensioned, I am happy to inform you that he has been prevailed upon to come out of retirement. And it is with the greatest personal satisfaction that I have the honor to appoint Jim Hadley Honorary Fire Chief of our city. What do you got to say for yourself, Jim? Well, folks, here I am again. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you, Chief, all my friends, and those that made my appointment possible. I'm very happy to have work to do. Inactivity will kill any man, even one my age. I'll be very happy in my new job and do the best I can. And I hope the Chief will not be sorry he gave me the appointment. 
And I'll never let a friend down.